What's up guys, it's Average Owl making average content for the average viewer and in today's video I want to discuss with you guys some tips and tricks for how to improve your aim in Battlefield 2042. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll have felt that sometimes within this game your aim can feel like you're shooting like Stevie Wonder after a fistful of and just know that you are not alone. I am seeing comments literally everywhere about how awkward and weird the aiming can feel in this game, on controller at least. I haven't played on mouse and keyboard so I don't know where that's concerned. There are so many different aiming settings and different game mechanics within Battlefield 2042 that until you get them all dialed in, your aim can feel super sloppy. Before we get into this video, if you came for the highbrow tips and stayed for the lowbrow humour, consider dropping this video a like. And if you like this sort of Battlefield 2042 tips and tricks content, then it would be absolutely awesome if you'd subscribe. But with that out of the way, let's make like a step mum emptying the dishwasher and get stuck in. Number one, change your aim assist. Now, unlike other YouTubers who care about watch time, I'm going to give you my absolute best and most helpful tip first. Change your aim assist. If you go to controller and then onto on foot, you'll see two options for your aim assist. These are the soldier zoom snap and the soldier aim assist. The soldier zoom snap is a bit of a controversial one and it's not actually that strong within the game. Basically what it does is when you hold down LT or L2, it will sort of snap towards your nearest target, providing that you are already within a certain range of that target. This is sort of personal preference. If you don't like it, then obviously reduce it. But the main tip I want to talk to you guys about is actually the soldier aim assist itself. Now, the way that this works is similar to how you would expect an aim assist to work. When you are aiming and tracking a target, it will slow down your sensitivity and sort of stick to the player model as you follow them, therefore allowing you to get easier hits on target. However, if you do have it turned up all the way to 100, I have found a massive glaring issue with this aim aim assist. Basically, as you snap onto a target and you begin to track them, the bubble that surrounds the target will make your aim either stick directly onto the target or slightly behind as they are running. It is then very, very, very hard to correct your aim so that you're leading the target and it shoots in front of them, making it so that if you are shooting at an enemy who is running, say, left to right from where you are, it's almost impossible to get your crosshair in front of them. What I would suggest doing is turning this aim assist down to at least 90. This will mean that you'll have to practice your aim a bit more for stationary targets. However, it makes it so much easier to get those crosshairs in front of your target and lead the enemies, leading to much more satisfying kills. Honestly, if you haven't noticed it already, this is one of the main reasons why the aiming in this game feels so janky. Everyone is leaving their aim assist on 100 and this is seriously hurting your performance. So go and change that setting right now. Number two crosshair projection. This is another little setting. If you do want a full settings guide, Broken Machine and Get Good Guy and the Tactical Brit are three YouTubers that are absolutely incredible and I would recommend going and trying out their videos. But I just want to talk about these two settings in this video and then I'll get onto some more gameplay centered tips. So for this one, you'll need to head to accessibility in the settings tab, then tab over to general and it's near the bottom and it's called cross hair projection. Basically what this does is it means that your crosshair is literally always in the center of your screen. This means that wherever your crosshair is when you zoom in and you ADS you're going to be aiming in the center of that spot. Before this could almost mean that your crosshair was slightly off center meaning that when you zoom in you're not always aiming exactly where you thought you might be if you're used to aiming into the middle of your screen. Turn this off right away and you'll notice a marked marked difference. What this means is when you're taking corners, you'll be able to be more conscious of where your crosshair is aiming and where your ADS is going to land when you do press LT or L2. So when you come around corners, for example, you'll be able to snap onto the enemy's head a lot quicker than you otherwise would. Number three, accuracy and recoil control. Now, for this one, I have got a few clips running in the background that will sort of correspond with what I'm saying. There are a few different attachments that you unlock at different rates within this game. And sometimes the attachments that you unlock later in the progression path aren't actually better than the ones you already have. And I want to show you a few examples here. For example, when it comes down to choosing your barrel attachment, you'll often get a couple of options. You'll either have a suppressor, a muzzle brake, or a compensator, or a heavy barrel. If you're trying to reduce the recoil of the gun, one thing that I would say is that controlling the vertical re 
trigger or of any gun is actually super simple. All you have to do is pull down on the mouse or slightly pull down on your right stick. This means that there is absolutely no need for you to be choosing an attachment that reduces the vertical recoil. This is exemplified by the fact that when you choose one of these attachments, it actually increases your horizontal recoil, meaning that although the gun will be traveling up your screen less, it will actually be deviating left to right more, which is so much harder to correct for. I'd probably even go as far to say that it's damn near impossible to correct for. Now, on top of this, in my testing, I found that when I was actually using the suppressor on the PBX, the horizontal attachment was only 2 or 3% better than what the suppressor was giving you. Not only that, but you also get lower vertical recoil from the suppressor because of the lack of negative effects in terms of the recoil performance. So I would always suggest using the suppressor or the heavy barrel when you were using an SMG at least. I haven't actually sat down and tested out what it's like on assault rifles, but considering that SMGs are more accurate and more easy to use at range at the moment, I would suggest using an SMG anyway. Now, just briefly on this tip, I do also want to mention accuracy. Accuracy, as we discussed in a video the other day, means how much bloom you are getting when you fire your shots. This means that when you are aiming at a point, how many bullets are actually going to hit that point and how many are going to deviate from that path. And what I have found is that you actually need to make a conscious decision about how you are going to be playing this game. With the underbarrel attachments in this game, they're gonna give you one of two things either accuracy while static or accuracy while moving. However, when you choose one of these, they also decrease the opposite. For example, if you choose an attachment that gives you accuracy whilst you are static, it actually means that you're going to be less accurate whilst you're moving as you otherwise would be if you had no attachment at all. Therefore, you need to make an actual decision about how you're going to be using the gun that you're building. If you're going to be using an SMG and running around, then you need to be more accurate whilst you're moving. However, putting an attachment on a DMR that makes you more accurate whilst you're moving and less accurate whilst you're static is going to dramatically affect the way that that gun performs. So really, really make sure you understand the gun that you're going to be using and how you're going to be using it. And finally, number four, and that is simply just to make use of the solo bot modes. I know there's been a lot of controversy about bots in this game when it comes to farming them for XP, but in the solo mode now against bots, the XP has been dramatically dropped down. On top of that, you can no longer farm the attachments for your gun, as I'm pretty sure it only lets you unlock the first two or three attachments for that gun in a bot match. However, there is a very, very good reason why you should be playing against these bots, and that is to practice your aim. In a real game of Battlefield 2042, you have to worry about capturing the objective, positioning yourselves, and making sure that you shoot the enemy before they shoot you. However, when you play against beginner level bots, this gives you a super good chance to practice your aim because honestly, they're pretty trash. I mean, they play like, well, bots. So when you join into a game and I would suggest breakthrough, you'll be able to get so many more shots on target and practice and get that muscle memory down for shooting that you can transfer into playing actual Battlefield 2042. I start at least every game session with at least one game against bots just to warm myself up and dial in that muscle memory and I cannot recommend it enough. So if you haven't been making use of this mechanic and this game mode, I would highly recommend it because it will help you to no end. Anyway, here are my tips to help you the best I can to improve your your aim and make this game feel a little bit more bearable when it comes to hitting those shots. For those of you who have watched my videos for a while, you'll know that I love to see you who sticks around until the end. So if you're still here, I'd like you to answer this question down in the comments. Would you rather have no teeth or no eyebrows? Anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace.